as things currently stand, the software has been trained on the most common litter items, any food on the go packaging, so drinks, cans, single use drinks. cups that you get in um, takeaway restaurants as an example crisp packets confectionery wrappers all, all of those have uh, the software has been has been trained on on those object types uh, drink stirrers um, so all, all of those are, are within scope and uh, the, the software has currently been uh, trained and it is performant at detecting those object types so again, it comes down to the regulations and it's up to the individual litter authority that's a local authority, what their litter policy is. Um, the way DEFRA who set out the regulations, they create a, ma a maximum and a, and a minimum amount for the regulations. And when a local authority makes their decision in terms of what the fine amounts are, those fine amounts will be the same for any litter object type. So if somebody had had a a large takeaway as an example that was enough for a family of four and all of that went out of a car window versus something that was by either biodegradable or small the fine would be exactly the same um, and that's dictated by DEFRA's regulations the level of that fine is going to be up to the local authorities individual policy in terms of where the software edge cases as an example if let's say you've got something that's fairly lightweight it might be a piece of plastic or a crisp packet or something that's on the floor and you've got a truck that goes past at 40 miles an hour let's say down a, a, an off slip from a motorway it could pull the crisp packet off off the floor in the slipstream that arguably could look like a littering offense so the software may legitimately transmit that to the local authority as a suspected littering offence, but it requires validating by the local authority for them to say that it's genuine. So there will always be some cases where there are th those sort of called edge cases. In the same sense, if computer vision is used by an oncologist to look at a, a, a cancer uh, image, they may want a second opinion to see if it's um, uh, a healthy cell or if there is some sort of diseased cell and and that that's the way the technology works we would then um, give it more examples of those edge cases so it becomes more intelligent and accurate over time so that um, any of that same scenario aren't um, uh, misaccurately detected or misaccurately predicted should I say in, in the future Absolutely. So there, there is always a human in the loop that ultimately is going to say there is a, going to be a, a fine or a penalty issued. It's not purely the software. It's a combination of the two. The software is doing that initial sift, if you like, that would send the information to the VAR. So what I can say to you, Alex, is we've already had discussions with uh, other authorities where they have said that our technology, their police colleagues would like access to uh, the technology for some of the reasons that we've already discussed from a, a training perspective the act of someone throwing something from a vehicle and it remaining on the floor whether it's been intentional or to do with is this person being a bit lazy and decided not to take something home because they don't want to put it in their own bin and somebody throwing some suspicious uh, or other um, item that could potentially get them in trouble from a software training point of view that that looks quite similar um, those behaviors are the same that action is the same an object has has left a vehicle and it's laying on the floor so in 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 that circumstance you're you're correct um the the, the software could um uh be uh, lend itself to that so we've 
we've got a, a broad patent portfolio that um, un underpins that that type of uh, activity. Uh, so what I can say is um, our primary focus has been on local authorities, streets, heads of service and street scene who are interested in the environment uh, and, and they deploy cameras to help prevent uh, or det uh, deter fly tipping, antisocial behaviour, things of that sort of nature. And sometimes those cameras can be deployed in areas where there's other sort of criminality. Um, they can be city centre locations, sometimes it's more rural. In terms of regions, I can say that it extends from Kent that we already know about going right up to the northwest of the UK. Um, so there's a, a broad geographic spread. And that's both city centre and rural locations. There are discussions going on with the intelligence community in regards to the use of ANPR technology uh, that may be available via litter cams cameras. If there are people leaving litter on a beach, let's say, for example, and not making any effort to take their litter home, then arguably you can train AI for that behaviour. Um, that's that's probably what I would say, but there would be issues, I think, from our perspective, from a practicality point of view of how the enforcement may work. Te technically, it could be possible, whether, whether it's something somebody would want to develop is, a, is another question. It's an interesting point, though. So the, the reason why I wanted to develop this technology was to deter people from littering from vehicles. Um, as a youngster, uh, my father picked up the litter uh, in the street where we lived. Uh, I always lived in the same house when, when I grew up. He was an avid carp angler, go fishing at lakes, and he'd go with a couple of carrier bags and bring home other people's litter. Um, a few years ago, about yeah, 2016, it's about October time, considering a change in direction from working, having worked in the contact centre of industry for about 20 years, it was unclear which direction I did want to go in and could see lots of litter trapped in the hedgerows um, as it's starting to become autumn and being the seasonal dieback, could see all the litter there. So I wondered whether there's something that I could do about it. The, those memories of civic pride as a youngster came, came to the foreground. I interviewed all the local authorities where I live here in West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire and Greater Manchester to understand the challenges that they've got in delivering the environmental quality that they wanted. And they said that they got problems in, in getting evidential quality footage. So I thought that I could do something that would have good civic duty, um, build upon those values that had been instilled in me as a youngster and really fundamentally save the taxpayer money. It's a deterrent solution. Uh, ultimately, we're trying to drive people's behavior change and just take their litter home, pop it in a bin. Good question. So um, we can use existing local authority cameras. So it they can have pan tilt zoom capabilities uh, or local authorities can deploy um, cameras where there are where there's no existing coverage as an example. We've had some success using the cameras that we specify detecting litter items at over 80 meters away. So in t if you think about single use drinks cups, so coffee cups as an example, and espresso cups being the smallest, just over the size of a golf ball, as an example, we've we've had success in detecting those between sort of 50 and 80 meters. Um, then if we go down in size, down to cigarette butts, 15, 20, 25 meters. Um, but again, it just comes down to the technology and how it's configured. Um, uh, if there is a hotspot area where there's no camera coverage, uh, an authority could choose a higher specification camera, make be three or four times as expensive. And you may then extend the reach 80, 100, 120 meters and beyond. So um, we've been approached by a, a number of nations spanning the Far East, right across the North America. And those are inbound inquiries. Um, we're not actively marketing. Um, and some of those discussions are quite advanced. Um, there's some smart city deployments in the Far, far East where um, uh, there are detailed discussions that are uh, taking place currently. 